Is your garage a mess? Join the club. But no worries, I'm here to help you get your garage in shape with a bunch of products and projects that will get it organized and looking like a brand new space in no time. Here's what we're gonna focus on. Sports equipment, bikes and scooters, tools and woodworking, gardening and yard tools, bulk household supplies, and seasonal items. And heads up, you can find links for all the products that I'm using throughout this video in the description below. Step one, we gotta get everything out of here. All right, now that we have a blank slate, here's my plan of attack. For this garage, bikes, scooters, and sports equipment are used almost daily, so we'll want those to be easily accessible and up near the front of the garage doors. Tools and woodworking items will go towards the back. This will also help keep kids away from potentially dangerous tools and equipment. Bulk household items should be close to the house entrance for easy access. Gardening and yard tools will go along the sidewall. Bins and seasonal items will be divided between ceiling storage and wall shelves. We're gonna start in the back and work our way forward. All right, so I have a lot of work to do in this garage, so my contractor friend Ben is gonna help me out throughout the process. The first area we're gonna focus on is this back wall, and it's gonna be completely dedicated to tools and woodworking. We're gonna go with a workbench, some closed storage, and then a large pegboard area for really easy accessible tool storage. Ben is starting off with some measurements, and we're gonna start by installing the pegboard first, then we'll layer in the other pieces and load them in with all the tools. All right, how are we looking here? Uh, I marked out the studs and got our first level line, so we're ready for the first fern strip. Okay, great. All right, so what I have here is a panel of pre-painted pegboard. I like this because it's already white. It's gonna look nice and clean. This is standard size, but we're gonna have a ton of different attachments and pieces that will be used to hold all kinds of hand tools and even some small scale power tools as well. First thing we need to do though is get some furring strips on the wall. And Ben has found our center point here and our studs. And now the reason we're adding a furring strip is you don't want your pegboard flush against the drywall. So we need to have a little bit of separation here. If you have exposed studs in your garage, then you're in luck. You don't even need to bother with furring strips. You can go right into the studs. Cool. All right, so our pegboard is fully installed and now we're going to bring in the workbench and the closed storage that we have and then we can get them all loaded up with our power tools and supplies. This pegboard wall is awesome. It looks super organized. Everything went from total chaos and clutter into this. But I have some tips to give you for how we organized everything. Think about the items you use the most and make those readily accessible. So drills, hammers, utility knives, screwdrivers, those should all be kind of in this first row so that you can get to them easily. Next, you wanna group like items. To hang everything onto the pegboard, I picked up a pegboard accessory kit. So it had a ton of options for me, all different types of ways I could hang things. And that's good because we have a variety of shapes and sizes here that we needed to hang. Another thing that I use that is really cool are these magnetic squares. And it's awesome because things will just stick right onto it. Here's what I have going on here. I chose a six foot sturdy workbench. This has a butcher block counter, which I really like for working off of. And then the back here has a backsplash, which is really awesome because then screws and small tools and nails don't roll off the back. I also like that there was plenty of space underneath to put additional storage. On the sides of the workbench, I added more closed storage. So this cabinet here is housing most of my larger scale power tools. I like that the doors close, that it's lockable, and also it has really big deep drawers to fit everything that I need. On the other side, we opted for a storage unit that's on wheels, which is really nice if you're working on a project kind of outside of the garage. And then above it, a wall cabinet that I paired with that so that we're making use of all the vertical space that this garage has. With this level of tool organization, you have no excuse not to get started on your next project. Okay, we are done with our indoor tool section. Now we're gonna focus outdoors on gardening and yard tools. And we're really gonna utilize the space between these two windows here. We wanna get things that were in this garage up and off the ground. We're gonna install a wall track system. This is awesome because it has a ton of different attachments. So it can hold everything from hooks to giving storage to rakes. Everything's gonna be up and off the ground. All right, so Ben, you've measured our center line, found some studs. It's really easy, we're just going to go off our center line to the left and right and screw it right to the studs. All right, so this wall track system comes with a bunch of attachment options for you. Everything from shelves 
to simple brackets that are great for like shovels and rakes to actual baskets. And these are really heavy duty. The idea is to get as much as possible up off the ground. All of this stuff is up off the floor and it's neat, tidy, and easy to access. We've tackled two walls of our garage and now it's time to look up to the ceiling for our next solution. I've always found that garages are a great place to store extra items from your home, like seasonal clothing, holiday decor, or even your old baseball card collection. Things you don't need all the time, and the ceiling is the perfect place for that. Ben's installing our ceiling storage unit. He's used a stud finder to locate the joist and using the included lag bolts to secure it. A word of caution, be sure to keep your ceiling storage clear from your garage doors and tracks. Sort your items by type to determine how much storage you'll need. When sorting, keep items together that you'll likely want to access at the same time. I like to sort my items by season, so everything I'll need for the fall, for example, is in the same place. Okay, last one. All right, now our seasonal items are up, off the ground, but still accessible when we need them. Nice work. If you have a large family or entertain a lot, there's a good chance that your garage is home to a second fridge and a pantry area for extra household supplies. I'm gonna help you get that all organized right now. Start by gathering up all the food and bulk items. Organize your items by type and store it in clear bins with lids. Food products intended for longer term use should remain dry, so storing food in a sealed container is a must. This also protects food products from dust and any rodents or animals that may make their way into your garage. Having a second refrigerator in a garage is a pretty common thing, but it isn't a great idea for everyone. It all depends on the climate you live in. Generally, it's recommended that refrigerators only be placed in rooms where temperature stays between 60 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Pro tip, keeping your fridge well stocked helps it maintain its temperature without overworking. Storing gallons of water in there is a great idea if you aren't completely stocked. All these household items are organized, easy to find, and the best part, it took me less than an hour to pull it all together. All right, our final area is sports equipment, outdoor toys, and bikes. And this can be a little tricky because it's oversized items and kind of weird shapes and sizes, but I have some really creative solutions that are gonna take care of it all. All right, so for this area, we're using a different type of rail system. It's one that you would generally think of using for like rakes and shovels, but it actually works really well with sports equipment too. All right, so I wanna show you a quick little hack that can take a simple utility shelf and turn it into sports equipment ball storage. All we're doing is taking a four foot adjustable bungee cord, hooking it on the top shelf and then the bottom. We're spacing them about six inches apart. You want them to be far enough apart that you can easily get balls in and out, but close enough that they also keep them in too. Makes it super easy for your kids to put them away. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Cleanup has never been easier. Next, sort your larger equipment into clear storage bins. Using clear bins makes a lot of sense because you can see what's in them. Stack everything on the shelves, hook everything on the hooks, done and done. As far as sports equipment organization goes, I'd say this is a home run. See what I did there? All right, we still need to organize all these bikes and for that I have a great DIY project. Okay, so we are going to build a freestanding bike rack. And a lot of times in garages, you'll see adult bikes kind of ceiling or wall mounted, and that's a great option. But for younger kids that are gonna be taking them in and out more often, it's a lot easier for them to have something that's on the ground versus lifting up. So we are actually gonna build our own, and Ben has a drawing here. How are we gonna do this, Ben? I think we're gonna make a simple frame on the floor and up one side, and then just have 45 degree dividers to put the bikes in. This is a build that you can customize depending on how many bikes you have. You can make it longer or shorter. For our purposes, we have a lot of bikes we need to yeah. store in this garage. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna be building this out of two by fours, is actually to cut some of our two by fours down to size, and then we're gonna rip a few of them thinner using our table saw. Okay, now we have our ripped down pieces, but we need to do a little work to them to make a triangle. Right, we need to cut a 45 degree miter on either end so that it makes the front of a triangle. Perfect, so to do this, we're gonna adjust our saw to a 45 degree. So you can see now that we have a nice 45 and it's gonna fit in just like this. Okay. 
Okay, so now that we have the L shape, the 90 degree shape built, we're gonna add, Ben has the 45 pieces that we cut. And basically, we're gonna space these out along the frame and the bikes will wheel right on in between. So as far as spacing, what are we going with here? I measured the bikes and the biggest one had seven inch forks. So let's do a seven inch space. Okay, great. So that's one of the things that you're gonna customize this build to fit what you have. But just remember that your kids will grow up and the size of their bikes are gonna increase. So you don't wanna go with kind of a toddler bike size that wouldn't later be able to grow along with them. If you've ever seen me do a build before, you know that I love a cheater block. So we cut down a piece of scrap wood to seven inches, which is our distance between each slat. And now we don't need to measure every single time. All right, about 20 minutes later, this entire thing is built. And now last step, I just want to get a quick coat of paint on it. incredible does this garage look? It went from complete chaos to now an organized functional space that looks pretty amazing too. I hope that you feel well equipped to start organizing, sorting, and tackling your own garage space as well. And guys, don't forget that all the products that I used in this space are linked below. I would love to know which of these products you think would make the biggest impact in your space, so drop me a comment and let me know. Want to learn more? Be sure to subscribe to the Lowe's YouTube channel for great step-by-step -step and how-to videos.